trace or reverse monotypes are prints that are made by inking or painting a clean surface, layering paper into the ink or paint, and then drawing a design on the back of the paper. The tone and density of line is measured by the artist pushing soft or hard and also using soft or rigid mark making tools. The resulting image is very much gestural in nature and has the tendency to display a shadowy or smudgy look around the lines and in some cases the background as well. Trace monotypes can be made without ink or paint and rather a variety of materials. One of the easiest and most straightforward ways is to use graphite. Using a pencil or graphite stick, shade a smooth piece of paper. In this case, I am using tracing paper. However, newsprint, Xerox, or butcher paper will work. An additional but not completely necessary step is to wipe down the graphite sheet with odorless mineral spirits in a cotton square. This evens out all lines and strokes that may show irregularity in the finished image. Once this is completed, you will need to let it dry before use. Once the graphite carbon sheet is dry, you can begin mark making. There are many strategies in setting up this technique, so keep in mind there is not a wrong way. In this case, I tape my printing paper to my work surface face up. Subsequently, I tape my graphite sheet face down on top of my print paper. One can certainly draw on the back side of the graphite sheet, however, it can be somewhat fragile. To avoid tearing the graphite sheet, I place a blank sheet of paper on top. The tools that are used for mark making can and will impact the image. Ballpoint and rollerball pens tend to produce fine detail as they are hard. Pencils tend to produce softer lines, however this can be subjective depending upon the lead type as well as the pressure used in the drawings. You may also want to make a simple bridge for your hand to rest on while drawing. Remember, any overhead pressure on the drawing surface will cause graphite to offset onto your paper. This bridge is made from a random piece of lumber and two small squares of mounting tape. The advantage of having your drawing and graphite surfaces taped in place is that you can always check your progress as you work. Instead of making your own graphite transfer paper, you can also buy it. Art supply stores will sell colored versions of transfer paper. Alternatively, office supply stores will sell carbon paper, which also works quite well. One note about paper selection. I have found that smoother and thinner papers, such as Kitakata, Mulberry, Reeves Light and Heavyweight Papers, or Arches 88, are capable of incurring finer and more precise detail. Heavy or fleshier papers, such as Arches Cover, Ponamule, or Watercolor Paper, will exhibit a rougher and inconsistent mark. This is especially important if your carbon sheet is face up and you are drawing on the back side of your printing paper.
Another material which can be used for trace monotypes are oil pastels. The benefit of using this medium is the rich, vibrant color that oil pastels have. Additionally, the soft and waxy consistency does not dry out, therefore making the oil pastels a perfect medium for trace monotypes. Caran d'ache water-soluble crayons can also be used. However, I found them to not lift as much as the oil pastels. Crayons can also be used for trace monotypes. However, despite heavy pressure from a ballpoint pen, the amount lifted was very subtle, which can be beautiful but somewhat limiting.